The flow of our genetic information moves from DNA to RNA to protein. Now, the SARS-CoV-2 adenovirus vaccine vector designed by Oxford and AstraZeneca takes advantage of this pathway by coming in at the DNA level. What they did was they used a weakened adenovirus that typically infects chimpanzees and rarely infects humans, removed the genetic material so they're only left with a viral shell. You could think of this like removing the insides of a filled donut. It's still there, but probably not as good. They can then modify this DNA by removing parts that allow it to replicate inside of our cells. They also can remove parts that allow it to make us sick. But at the same time, they also remove the genetic material for SARS-CoV-2. Specifically, they cut out a single part of the DNA that encodes to make that spike protein on the outside of the virus. They then combine that small part of the spike protein DNA from SARS-CoV-2 with the remaining parts of the adenovirus DNA. This modified DNA is then inserted back into the viral shell. Now this viral shell with this modified DNA can then be used as a vaccine. When it's used as a vaccine and administered, it will still infect a human cell because of that intact viral shell. It will then release the DNA contents hoping to replicate, but because it's been modified, it can't. The only thing it can do is now turn that DNA into the precursor mRNA for the spike protein of SARS-CoV-2, and then our own bodies will turn that mRNA into the spike protein. As soon as that spike protein is made, that's when our bodies say, wait a second, that protein is not supposed to be here. They elicit an immune response to destroy it and then send that memory to our B and T cells in order to make antibodies against SARS-CoV-2. In case they ever see it in the future, they can recognize it and destroy it before it makes us sick, thus keeping us healthy.